for a while now, I've been making these fun articulating toys. So as you can see, they have these hinges, right? And um, these toys are really easy to make. Amazingly enough, they uh, don't take a lot of knowledge and uh, the end result is a lot of fun. I've made a few of them. There's the, the cat, of course. There's the little Dushun that I made. And there's also Mr. Robot that uh, has these movable joints. And all of these toys are based on the same basic idea. So the hinges are available for download off of Thingiverse. They were made by a fellow maker by the name of Nerys. And you can download them and use them as you will. There are many, many things that you can make with them. Now, Nerys has also got a video on how to use the uh, hinges, but the video is based on Tinkercad. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use these hinges using FreeCAD. And I'm also going to show you how you can leverage FreeCAD's abilities to do some other fun things with the hinges. So if you are somebody who's relatively new to 3D printing and you're trying to figure out how to make something original and not just go to Thingiverse and download a model and print it, then this is a video for you. You'll learn a little bit about computer-aided design. You'll learn a little bit about how you can take an image off the web and convert it into a 3D model. So if you're interested in knowing how to do this, then stay tuned and I'll be right back. So for this project, you're going to need some software. Specifically, you're going to need three pieces of software. And all of the software that we're going to be using uh, is open source, so it's completely free. You can just go to uh, the web and download it without any cost whatsoever to you. So we're going to need FreeCAD, of course. We're also going to need Inkscape. And we're going to need GIMP. FreeCAD is the computer aided design software. For this project, I recommend that you use the real Thunder version of FreeCAD. So while this is a fairly easy project to do, it does require a fair amount out of FreeCAD. And the real Thunder version is optimized for this kind of thing. And it's much easier to, to do the project uh, than it would be with uh, the released version of FreeCAD. So I'm going to put the link to all of these pieces of software in the description below, but I do recommend that you bypass the released version of FreeCAD and just go with the real Thunder version because that's the one I'm using and it's a lot easier. It'll save you uh, a lot of headaches. The Inkscape application is a vector-based graphics program and GIMP is kind of like Photoshop, it is an image editing application. So you'll need these three things. You'll also, of course, need a 3D printer to print out the final product and filament and, and so on. But since this is a 3D printing project, uh, I'm going to assume that you have a, a 3D printer. So let's turn to the web and find an image that is usable. All right, so the best way to find an image is just to go on Google and search for it. And specifically, you should search for silhouette images. Those work best with this type of thing. So if you put in silhouette clip art or silhouette images, it should bring up the kind of thing that we're looking for. So you can see here that there are a whole bunch to choose from. And any one of these silhouette images will do the trick. It's much better to have an image that does not have a lot of detail. And it's also 
better if you can find an image like this to have an image that is one piece so there aren't there aren't multiple pieces that make up the image now with the cat image that i'm going to use it is actually made up of multiple pieces as you can tell here um not all the parts of the image are actually attached you can see there's a gap between the head and the ears there's also a uh gap here between the eyeball and the outside of the eye and there's a little uh sort of infill for the nose and that's not going to work because all of these things will print separately if you simply take the image and try to print it it's fixable and you can make this kind of an image work but it does take a little bit more effort and this is what we're going to be using gimp for we're going to take this image we're going to bring it into gimp and we're going to fix the problems the other thing of course is that this is not a jpeg image it's a webp image and in order for us to convert it into a vector image uh, an svg image we're going to have to first of all convert it to a jpeg and then we're going to convert it into an svg and then the svg is an image that we can bring into FreeCAD and make it into a 3D model. So I already have the image downloaded. So let's just open up GIMP and bring the image in and do all the things that we need to do to it in order to make it uh, usable as a 3D model. All right, so I have GIMP open and now I'm just, I'm just gonna bring in the image and uh, work with it to make it 3D printable. So we'll go to file, open, here's the image, and um, it'll open up. I'm also going to make uh, another layer, a background layer here to work with. It'll just make it a little easier for us. So I'm going to make the uh, fill white, the background white, and um, we'll say OK. So we've got the image uh, that we just made the layer that we just made on top. We want to bring it to the bottom. All right. So now what we're going to have to do is fix this image so that it will become 3D printable. And as you can see here, the gaps are going to make things a little more difficult. We can't have these kinds of gaps since each of the parts will print separately and we don't want that so we want to make the image essentially one thing instead of multiple components so the way we're going to do that is by taking our brush and essentially painting in these areas so that um, they will uh, merge so let's do that so there we go we're just filling it in and that's i'm just going to do that i'm just going to fill in all the parts that need to be filled like this i'm going to do the same thing on the other side very simple job uh, but it has to be done if you find an image like this that has multiple components, you're gonna to have to do the same thing. If the image that you find is just one component, you don't have to worry about this. You can just use it. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm um, actually thinking if I should fill this in. So this is, um, you know, a, a gap that they put here to give a sense of three dimension, a uh, three dimensionality. But um, I don't know if we actually need it. I think it may work better if we actually don't have that gap. So I'm actually going to just fill it in. Uh, I'm just going to experiment uh, and and see if it works better this way. With the cat that I um, printed already, I left the gaps. And it didn't look all that great. So I'm just going to fill it in and uh, see if it works better. All right. So that's that. 
and um, the next thing we're going to do is going to have to erase the eyeballs here. So let me just uh, zoom in. And we're going to erase the inner eyeball here because we don't need it. It's not going to print out properly. So let's just do that. Uh, we'll get the eraser. And we'll just get rid of this. And get rid of all the little black dots inside the eyeball. Like so. Let's go to the other one and do the same thing. And we'll do the same thing with the little nose bit here. All right. I think that's it. Let me take a look. Oops, too much. All right. That looks good to me. So at this point, we're going to um, we're going to save this as a JPEG. Right now it's a WebP image, so we're gonna export it as a JPEG. Now I know this looks a little funny here, but we're gonna fix that when when we do the uh, 3D modeling. So let's just uh, save this or export it as a uh, as a uh, JPEG image. So we're gonna select file type, and we're gonna go to JPEG. And we'll save it as a JPEG image. And we'll make it a large image. We'll just keep all the details. It may help us later. We'll say, uh, OK, export. And there we have it. Uh, that image should have been exported now to the folder. So let's just go to the folder and see if it's there. And here it is. This is the WebP image, and here is the JPEG image. Okay, so we made the export, and it looks pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do is bring the image into Inkscape and convert it into a vector file. So let's open up Inkscape and uh, do that. All right, so now we're in Inkscape. And here, we're going to take the JPEG image that we created in GIMP, and we're going to convert it into an SVG. An SVG file is a vector file, and it's the kind of file that FreeCAD understands. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And unlike a JPEG, which is basically made up of pixels, it's a raster image, which you can open in FreeCAD, but you can't really do much with it. A vector image is geometry. It's a geometrical file. All the graphics are made up of vertices or points. And this is something that FreeCAD and other computer-aided design programs understand. So in Inkscape, we're going to take the JPEG image and we're going to convert it into a vector image. So we're going to start by, first of all, importing the image into Inkscape. Now, you might notice that there's the option to open an image and to import an image. We're going to import the image into Inkscape because if you open it, it's gonna open a whole new project and we don't want that. We just wanna import the image into this project that I already created. So we go to import and we open up the Cornish image that we created in GIMP. So we click on that and we say, OK. At this point, uh, the image is imported. And uh, the only thing that we're going to do in Inkscape is take this JPEG image and convert it into a vector image. And there's a plugin in 
Inkscape that makes it really easy to do this. So in order to make the conversion, you simply have to go to uh, Path and Trace to Bitmap. And this opens up a plugin that will allow you to trace that JPEG image into a vector image. So I'm just going to move out of the way here and uh, show you how to do this. So you'll notice here that there's a preview of the vector. And you can see that the vector image here looks pretty good. So the only thing that we need to do, we don't have to do any configuration or anything like that. The only thing that we need to do is click on the apply button down here and it will generate a vector image from this graphic. And we can see that it did this by pulling the graphic out of the way. And uh, we see the uh, vector image underneath. So at this point, we don't even need the graphic image anymore. We can just uh, delete it. And we can work with the vector image by itself. So one of the things that we need to do is um, put the vector image in the right place. And uh, what we want to do is basically put it right at the upper left-hand corner. And you may be asking, well, why do we need to do this? The reason is that the upper left-hand corner in Inkscape represents the center in FreeCAD. So if we want the image or the vector to open up properly in Inkscape, we have to save it up here. And the way to find the center of the vector um, is made more easy by clicking the snapping tool. So the snapping tool is right over here. I'm going to click on it. And this will make it possible to find the center of the image. So you can see here the green line. So there it is. Uh, it snaps right to the center. Now, at this point, the image is way too big. It is 211.423 uh, millimeters in width by 237.118 in height. And this is way too, too big. So I'm going to reduce this vector image to something a little more manageable, let's say 100 millimeters in width. I'm going to lock here so that the aspect ratio stays locked. And I'm going to change the number here to 100 millimeters. And this will reduce the vector to something that's a little more manageable. So I'm just going to put this at the center here. And uh, the only thing that's left to do now is save this as an SVG. So we do this by going to File, uh, Save As. And we're going to save it as an SVG. And I'm just going to call it Cornish Rex Vector SVG. There's already a copy of it here. I'm just going to write over it by saying Save. And I'll just say Replace. And now we're basically ready to go into FreeCAD and do the fun stuff to extrude the image into a 3D model. So let's go into FreeCAD and uh, do that. All right, so the last thing that's left to do is to take the SVG file that we created and make it into a 3D model. And we do that from uh, within FreeCAD. So the first thing that we need to do is create a new project in FreeCAD. So you go to File, New, and uh, create a body. So uh, that's all we need for the moment, just the body. We don't need to create a sketch at all. So once we create a body, we go to the model view and we see that there's a body there. The next thing we need to do is bring in the SVG file that we created into FreeCAD. So we do that by going to File, Import, and clicking on the SVG file that we made. And that SVG file is Cornish underscore Rex underscore vector. So we click on that and a new window opens up asking us if we want to import the SVG file as an image or as geometry.
we're going to be converting it to a 3D model. So we need to open it up as geometry. So we choose SVG as geometry and we select that. And here is the cat, or at least uh, a silhouette of the cat. So at this point, what we need to do is take the SVG elements that have been imported here and convert them into a sketch. And the way we do that is by highlighting all the elements of the SVG, going to the menu for the various workbenches and moving from part design to draft. And in the draft workbench, there's an option to convert the SVG elements into a sketch. And you do that by clicking on this draft to sketch icon. So when you click on it, you'll notice that a new sketch is created here. So when that's done, you can simply turn off the SVG elements as we don't need them anymore. So you hit the space bar and those elements are turned off. So now what we have is a sketch of the cat. So we need to go back to the part design workbench. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to turn off the grid because we don't need the grid anymore and we it just gets in the way. So let's turn it off. And at this point, we can go to the part design workbench where we were before. So at this point, what we want to do is pad the cat. Yeah, pad the cat or extrude the cat. Give it some depth. And um, we can only do this if we make this sketch part of the body. So if we leave it here, it's not really a part of this body. And if you try to pad it, it's going to give you an error. So the way to avoid that is by simply taking the sketch and dragging it into the body like so. At this point, you can highlight the sketch, go to the pad option, click on it, and it'll pad the cat. There it is. The cat is padded. And we want to have a depth of 7.9 millimeters because that is how much uh, depth the uh, hinge has. So we want to have an equivalent depth to the cat as we have to the hinge. So let's change the depth to 7.9 millimeters. We say okay to that. And uh, once it closes, we have a three-dimensional cat. So theoretically, at this point, we can print the cat just as it is right now, but we won't, we don't want to do that because we want to make an articulated cat or an articulating cat. And the only way for us to do that is by putting some hinges on it. So that's what we're going to do. So the way we do that is by, again, importing the hinges into FreeCAD by going to File, Import, going to the folder where the hinges are, and then highlighting the various parts that make up the hinge and saying Open. And there they are. So in order to make the hinge work, there are three parts. There's the hinge itself, there's the slicer, and then there's the punch. And we're going to use all three parts in order to give this cat some hinges. So let's just move these elements out of the way first. So let's, let's move the hinge out of the way and the slicer. We're going to use the transform option in FreeCAD to move things around. And let's move the punch around as well here. So we've got the three elements that are going to be used to put the hinge in the cat right here in the corner. Now, at this point, those three elements are meshes. They're, they're STL files. And uh, FreeCAD doesn't play very well 
with STL files because you can't really do much with them. They're not editable, editable. They're not really solid. They can be very troublesome if you're trying to do some something with them in FreeCAD. So the option that we have is to convert these meshes into solids that are much more usable in FreeCAD. And it's a very easy thing to do uh, in this case. So let's just highlight the three parts and then go to the part workbench. In the part bench, there are a couple of functions that we can use to convert the mesh elements into solids. So the first thing we do is go to a part and we say, create shape from mesh. We click on that and a new window opens up. You can just use the default here, say, okay. So you can see here that um, something new has been placed in the window uh, and uh, uh, this part now can be used to create a solid. So let's just turn off the STL files and highlight the three parts. And at this point, what we want to do is convert the parts into a solid. And again, we go to part, convert to solid, and that'll convert the parts to a solid. It might take a minute or two, but here we have the solid version of the part. At this point, we can turn off the parts and we can see that the solids have weird lines, weird geometric lines. We want to clean that up because it's uh, a bit problematic if we have it there. So the way we do that is by highlighting the three elements, going to part, going to create a copy and refine shape. And there we have the three parts that are now usable within FreeCAD. Perfect. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is basically slice the cat so that we can put some hinges into the body of the cat. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that we need to do is move the slicer uh, into the body of the cat. So I think I'm going to put like four hinges in the body of the cat. So th the first thing that I'm going to do is um, take the slicer here and move the first one into the body of the cat where I want the first cut to be. So let's say around here. So we'll just move that up like that. That's perfect. And I'll say okay to that. Now I, I said I wanted like four hinges. So what I need to do is copy the slicer. The way we do that is by highlighting the first slicer, going to copy and paste, and then copy. And this is going to give you the option to copy all the elements associated with the slicer, but we only want one. And what we want is the refined solid that we created. So turn off the other uh, solid and just choose the refined solid and say, okay. And then we can go to edit and paste. And we can paste three of them since we already have one and we want four. So edit, paste, edit, paste. So now we have four slicers here, but they're all overlapping here. So what we want to do is we want to move the slicers about 10 millimeters apart. So the way we do that is by first of all, finding out the position of the first slicer and the position of the first slicer. And we want to move it along the X axis. The position of the first slicer is at one 
32 millimeters. So we go to the next slicer and we move it to 142 millimeters. 142. There we go. Then we go to the third slicer and we move it to 152. There we go. And then we go to the last slicer and we move it to 162. And so we have four slicers. Now, there is a problem here. You see, the last slicer intersects the uh, paw of the cat. And if we just slice it here, it's going to make a great big slice along the paw of the cat. And we don't want that. So in order to avoid that, what we can do is basically just move that last slicer up a little bit to avoid it chopping off the leg of the cat or the paw of the cat. So we go to transform and we move up the last slicer just a bit so that it doesn't cut the paw of the cat. And now we are going to get the cat sliced in four different areas. All right. So how do we do that? Well, we do that very simply. We go to part design and we highlight the four slicers and then we use a Boolean operation. So this is the Boolean operation. We click on it and we can go to the pull down menu and choose the cut option so when we cut it and say okay nothing happens but something did happen it actually cut the body of the cat and the way you see that is if you highlight the four solids and you turn them off by hitting the space bar you'll see that the cat has four different slices here and these are the places where we're going to put the hinges. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is go to the hinge and place it along these slices. So I'm going to pull the hinge down to the very bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing with the hinge that I did with the slicers. So firstly, I'm going to use the transform tool to bring it to where I want it to be the first one I want to place the first hinge so I want it to be uh, somewhere around here let's say and I'll say okay to that now what I want is the edge of this hinge to be essentially in line with this uh, part of the cat this line of the cat so what we want to do is just move it a little bit along the x axis so let's move it one millimeter at a time 144 that's too much so we want to move it a little bit so we'll say um 143 point five that's too little six maybe or maybe even seven let's see here so that looks pretty good to me so if we take a look we can see that that is actually perfect so once we have the first hinge placed where we want we can do the same thing as we did with the slicer we just make a copy of the hinge so go to um, the hinge highlighted go to copy and then choose only the refined hinge say okay and then paste it and paste four of them or three of them so that you have four hinges all right so now we have four hinges and then we 
go to the second hinge and we put it at 153 so 10 millimeters 153 10 millimeters apart one sixty three and one seventy three all right so now the hinges are in place the final thing that we need to do is punch a hole right here in order to make the hinges visible so we do that with the punch so again we simply Go to where the punch is right here and we bring it to the very bottom and then we can use the transform to move it around and we'll move it down to an approximate place and over We'll say OK. And it's not quite in place, so let's uh, move it up a little bit. Or move it back a little bit. So 113.5. That's pretty good. And then let's move it up a little bit. So that's 8.5 let's say just off the top of my head five maybe 8.6 and maybe 8.7 even okay so that that actually looks perfect mm, maybe move it forward a little bit it needs to be a little more forward so let's just go to the exposition and move it to seven okay that's better yeah that's better okay i think that's going to work better so that's perfect let's just copy and paste the punch so again go to copy and paste copy choose only the refined shape say okay edit paste that's two edit paste three and paste four and basically do the same thing so move it up by 10 millimeters so that's 23 that's 33 and that's 43 excellent and the last thing that we need to do is use the boolean function to cut or punch through the body of the cat so we highlight the four punches we go to the boolean function and we say cut and we go to okay we're not going to see anything until until we turn off the four punches so we highlight them turn them off and there we have it we've got the hinges that are going to print perfectly you can see a close-up of it and it looks like it's going to work very well so that was pretty easy right all right so we're almost done we've got a few more things to do uh specifically if you want to use this as a keychain holder we need to make a a little sort of keychain ring uh sort of uh place uh on the cat i think i'm going to put it on the head of the cat so i'm going to put it on the back here like that right here somewhere and the way we do this is by simply creating a new sketch and let's just turn it right side up here and we're going to do this very easily by going to the create circle and we'll make a circle right here somewhere 
this doesn't have to be 100% precise. Uh, let's just try to center it on the head of the cat somewhere. And uh, I'll make the circle about 10 millimeters. So let's just go to the constrained diameter and we'll make it 10 millimeters. And inside, we're going to make another circle that is about seven millimeters. So let's do that. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's make another circle and we'll make that seven millimeters. So constrain diameter, seven millimeters. Like so, all right, that's pretty good. Seven, 10, all right, that looks good to me. And now, uh, oh, let's just for the sake of it, constrain this completely. So let's just uh, constrain um, vertically. Let's make it uh, 38 millimeters, nice even number. And then let's make, that's the vertical uh, constraint. Let's make the horizontal constraint. Well, let's leave it where it is because it's perfect. So we'll say okay to that. And now we have a fully constrained sketch. We'll go to the sketch, we'll close this and we will pad the sketch. We only want it to be padded about three millimeters all right, so right now you can see it's kind of going in the wrong direction. So the first thing we want to do is we only want to make it about three millimeters. So let's change the thickness of it to three. And then we need to reverse it in order for it to um, be lined up with the back side of the cat. Uh, we say okay to that. And we should have a little ring to hang our key in and then the last thing that we're going to do is fix this hind leg here because uh you know this doesn't look right so we're going to make another sketch here click on sketch and what we're going to do is offset this hind leg a little bit so that it looks like it's the back leg Anyway, you'll see what I mean. So we're gonna use the create polyline tool here to make this happen. I think it's probably, there, there may be another tool you can use to make this happen, but I think this is a pretty good tool. It, it will work. So what we do is we basically uh, do this. We just take the line here across like so, and then we do this, we just follow the shape of the hind leg, like so. Uh, there we go. And then we just join it up. Perfect. I think it's perfect. It doesn't have to be 100% precise because it doesn't matter. I mean, this is not a functional part, right? So you can just eyeball it and it'll work just fine. Uh, with other models that you make, you may have to constrain everything and make sure that everything is 100% exact, otherwise things just won't fit. But in this case, it just doesn't matter that much. So we're not gonna bother with constraining it. So once we have the basic shape that we want to offset, we close this and we are going to now create a pocket. So we go to the pocket option and we're gonna make a pocket of about four millimeters. That, that'll work. So uh, five is a little too much. Let's make it four, which is about, well, not quite, but it's a little more than half of 7.9, which is, which is fine. So let's say okay to that. And uh, what will happen is that we will have the hind leg offset a little bit 
and it'll look pretty good. Once we print it out, it'll look pretty good. I think it'll look pretty good. So, um, the last thing that we have to do, because we're basically finished, the last thing that we have to do is print out the cat and uh, see how it turned out. So, let's do that. Let's print it out and see if we were successful. Oh, before we do that, though, we need to name everything and we also need to save the project. So I'm just going to do that very carefully. And you should do that when you are doing your project. Make sure that you name everything. Otherwise, you're going to get confused because even this very simple project has lots of parts here. So um, it's a good idea generally to name everything. I'm not going to name everything right now because that would be very boring for you. But just remember to name all the different elements uh, in your in your project. But I will give the project itself a name. So let's just save it as we'll save it as well. I've already got one here, but we'll save it as Cornish Rex Cat Cat or YouTube video. Perfect. So that's the name we're going to give the project. We'll say save. And now we're ready to print it out. So um, let's just uh, take this cat and export it as an STL. So you can see here, if you just export it by highlighting the body, the hinges aren't going to export. So what you need to do is actually go and highlight the hinges as well. So each hinge needs to be highlighted and at this point you can go to file export and export it as an stl file so it automatically will export as cornish rex cat for youtube video dot stl say save and uh, that should work so let's open up the slicer and gen and then bring the file into Prusa Slicer to see what it'll look like. So I'm just going to uh, pull this file here that we just made. And there it is. Ready to be printed. And it looks pretty good. So let's send it to the printer. And then I'll come back and we'll check it out and make the final assessment on how well it turned out. Right. So as you can see, the print turned out very well. The cat looks amazing. The layer lines look great. And most importantly, the hinges work. So if you are interested in creating your own model, follow the video and I'm sure you can come up with something yourself. So if you've got something out of this video, please Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and give the video a thumbs up. Until next time, go out there, have some fun, make something interesting, and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye for now.